Yes, I. Yeah, man. What well, go on, boss? Everything up for liar. Yes, I. Yes, yeah, I. Man, bro. Yes, I. You know, it's it's all about the peace of love rhythm. Tell me about first. You know, when you first heard the rhythm, what kind of vibrations you got from it? With more time, I man is a musician too. You know, so I create music. I produce music. You know. So when I heard that music, it was right up my alley in the sense of uh, I'm on more gravitate to the foundation type of rhythm, you know, and this, this particular production had that feel in it, you know, that kind of ancient feel along with the others, because I do three productions with Walchi, so to speak, then, you know, one time to let it be known, but this last one here was one of my favorites still, you know. I agree. It's a it's a really good rhythm because um Walsh hit me up. He was like, you know, I like you to meds this rhythm. I ain't no problem. So I was really expecting like a traditional dancehall rhythm, a rhythm in the sense that we've heard for the last twenty years of a rhythm. When I, when, when I when I tuned it in, I clicked, and I heard it was a roots reggae rhythm. I fell in love right away. Well, one time you know roots reggae have it it it, it life then it very prevalent in in a way where you can't get rid of it then more time. The, the message and the feel of that, that brand of music, you know, it, it, it must stick around, you know, and the authentic side of it, the authentic side of it is like that breed that we're here in Wall she produced there with the Expanders, you know, it's a tough band too. Is this your first yeah, time working with Wall she and the Expanders? Nah, there's the third, the third production, because I do the first one, which was um, We There on the top shelf for them. Okay. And then I do... And next one named Something New, a Lover's Rock one. That was on the Give Thanks Rhythm. And now this one here on the Peace, Peace of Love Rhythm, you know. Let's talk about it. Unity. Yes, sir. What was the inspiration? Unity. One humanity, you know. It come in like that tune come from the higher ups, you know. Because more time is my mom wrote that tune. And my, my queen come from like a long line of... Proper music way, you know. I come from that breed too. My father is a bass man, you know. My queen is a singer and musician too as well. So yeah, that that tune come from the higher ups the way like is a message for the youth in this time here, yeah, you know. You, you talk about you, yes, know, you speak about your parents. One of the things I read about what a huge influence your parents had on you musically. Let me ask you this question: Based on their musical influence, their musical taste, how did that affect your musical taste from what you got from your parents? Yeah, well, more time I born as Rasta. I born from a queen who is Rastafari, you know, playing reggae music and even jazz and enough, enough breed of music because I live outside in Miami for about, from the age of six till about 18. So I get exposed to a, a broad, a broad feel of music, you know. But in my house, it was pure musician, a drum set always around, you know, a bass guitar always around. More time I didn't gravitate it in my youthful days, you know. But it was always something that come natural to me then, you know. I always knew how to, knew my way around music then, you know. Yes, so sir. yeah, my, my father is a bass man, play with Arita Franklin, Barry White, enough different ones outside. And down here too, you know, Rasho T.I., some of the greats, Andre, Andre Tanka and others, you know. Yeah, you so talk yeah, I come from that, that blood. Okay, you talk about, you know, you you know you were born in Trinidad, then you moved to Miami, you grew up a little bit in Miami, then you moved back to Trinidad. Yes, sir. You moved back to Trinidad, yeah, you moved back to Trinidad, and I've gone through, like, the whole, the Trini musical influence from all the different cultures, you know, the Parang, you know, when you think of Trinidad, you think Soka, Soka, Soka. You don't get this big Roots vibration. What's the community like for Roots rockers, reggae in Trinidad? What's, what's that community? Yeah, glad you asked that question, you know, and that is, um, that is something that you wouldn't be aware of looking from the outside when you check out Trinidad because of what is really advertised about, you know, or what we what we brand as our culture, you know, but more time it have real, real Rasta man, plentiful down in Trinidad who, who really, really listen staunch hardcore reggae music from long time before I born, you know, and, and up till this day, you know. Although more time, you know, you see how things is gravitate with the youths being programmed, so to speak, you know. But in the in the way that our foundation keep living on, yeah, it live on in Trinidad where it always even yeah, you know I mean Max Romeo, you know, um Admiral Tabet, Ika Mouse, them is just some of the musicians, 
singers I play with, you know, in my band too. Because they always keep coming to Trinidad, the yeah. foundation music, going down here, you know. I like your tune, Six Million Wasted Dub, because I'm a big guy on dub. I'm a big, one of my favorite, you yes, know, sir. sound system is um, uh, Black Chariot out of Trinidad. I like those vibrations. So yes, when sir. I hear your music, I know you like dub. I like, you know you like the energy of dub. Six million ways to dub yes, one of your tunes. What about dub music that you feel like kind of speaks to you? Well, everything about dub music, you know, more time I as an engineer to uh, overstand what's going on with the dub then, you know. But when when I, and I say dub too now in Trinidad, it come like that was one of the first places where man get a freestyle and express theself, you know. Because now, when they buy a record, they will get a dub track on the next side with no voice on it. You know what I mean? More time, it might have a little piece of voice, but it's just rhythm, it's just instrumental, like, you know what I mean? And they're dubbing it, so that will give man a chance now to freestyle and to build skill, you know? So from in the days of, from, from early days of dub, you know, that was the, that was the, that was the ground where man get to, like, cut the teeth then, so to speak, then express the self then. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, and sir. I give thanks for that. That was that is a good thing. I think like most genres, other genres should adopt that feature when it comes to releasing music, you know? When I clicked on your tune, Unity, when I heard your voice, one of the first things that popped into my head was um, Akibeka, Midnight. And I, 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 I thought sure. for a second that maybe I had, you know, click one of my midnight playlists when I heard your voice. So that's the vibrations you gave me. Have you heard, anybody ever said that to you before? Yeah, that actually was a couple of um, interviews. Well, that was a, like a portion of the interview was levicated to, you know, that brother there and how the resemblance. More time is not, so to speak, like the exact, like um, what to say. You know, he every man have him own tone then, you know? Like the message, the message. Naturally. The message and your flow yeah, and more, his flow. Yeah, but the, the message. message and the maturity. Yeah, yeah. I think more time me and the Bridget from the same tribe too, you know, more time. Well, I look at the message as, you know, the whole, the influence to Haley Selassie. Because, I, you know, I realize that's, that's been right. a, a huge impact on you, Haley Selassie. Let me ask you, what's your that's favorite right. Haley Selassie philosophy that you, like, take for yourself in your life and in your music? Well, one of the greatest, when I say, it has so many, you know, because even my queen write a book named Ital Sips, with enough different um, sips from his majesty, so to speak, then reasonings from his majesty then. But one of the ones will stand out right now, and I give thanks that you asked that question too, you know, because gave me the opportunity to say that, you know, until the philosophy that holds one race superior and another inferior, you understand to to really bring light to what that means is what that speaking to is what we just call or what is called white supremacy then you know but i call it white dependency you know what i mean but that is speaking to the idea of one race being superior and another inferior then so that addressing and it come like even in 2020 it come like right now that idea being challenged worldwide because you know it's like a period in time where, you know, um, I think we have enough cosmic things going on in the atmosphere and thing to energize right to, to come to the forefront. You know, I ain't even go say like a race or nothing, but the right and the wrong, you know what I mean? It go be, it go, it go have a challenge and it have a face off right now with the ideology that whole one race superior, which is white supremacy being challenged then, you know, by by all the other races worldwide, you know? So that is one of my favorite things to hear and to see taking place in my lifetime, you know, in 2020 and, you know what I mean? Come out of the wood as his majesty. So, yeah, it's powers. Absolutely, absolutely. It was, you know, it's really ironic the times we're living in the things we're seeing because when I read your story of your, your migration from being born in Trinidad moving to Miami, then moving back tri to Trinidad, finding Rasta, and that journey to Haiti Selassie, I, it reminds me of my own, because I'm originally born in Antigua. Yes, I was born in Antigua, yes, then I moved to New York. I lived, you know, the New York City life. 
then I find myself back in Antigua and really getting into my culture roots. So I understand that and I feel like that musical journey is we, we, we share very similar. When you moved from Miami, going back to Trinidad, were you Rasta then? Mm, yeah, well, more time uh, my, a born Rasta That's to the powers of the most high, but you know, I wouldn't say for myself I overstand the fullness. You know what I mean? I was a uh, just like any product of the um of the streets then, you know what I mean? But outside of that I always had a good groundation to understand well, you know, it's blackness, you know. My my creator. I didn't see myself as inferior like how I was, you know. Program. Outside how, how, how I was. How you feel made yeah, was, how, how the program, program, yeah, how the programming set, you know? Yeah, I never accept that because I give thanks I have a queen and Thing who always burned that out from early, you know what I mean? Who always get rid of that out of me. So I was proud to be African, proud to be black, proud to have the kind of hair and the kind of skin and the look I have. So it was it was still a, you know what I mean, a phase still, you know, because you know how how the thing is, especially how they how great the influences, you know, as a youth coming up. Yeah, so. It's when I really come forward here where I get a chance to really think, you know. Yeah, man. People yeah, and man. come away from how they, that kind of speed. Yeah. Nice, nice. So let me ask you, what kind of feedback have you, have you been receiving from the, from, the, from the tune? Unity. What kind of feedback have you been getting from the people? What are people are saying? What are the streets are saying? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a great vibe, you know. Enough, enough good feedback, you know. Wall Street Fire was one of the first ones who let me know, yo, this tune great. You know what I mean? Even my management too, what that, that. Everybody hear the tune, love the tune, you know? It's a good medicine for right now then. It's a, it's, good, it's, a good, it's a good time for the message. It's a good time for the message. It's the right message at the right time. Yes, I, yeah. 100%. Which, this tune record, I think, over eight months now. You know? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Last year, this tune record. So, yeah, it come like when a fruit, a fruit pick and it green and you get time to write now and then it get ready to present to the people then. Yeah. All right, there nice. It come like. Buzz Rock, Buzz Rock, that is all I have. I'm good. I think I got a lot of good stuff. I'll give you the floor to say anything you'd like to say to anybody at this time. Feel free, Bridget. Yeah, what I would say is a pleasure to do this show with the eye, you know. Give thanks to open up your gates and let him and speak to your public, to your people and thing, your family and thing. But more time now, it's just, you know, serious time that you the messages, you know. Serious times we're in right now. You know, black man, solar man, melanated man, you know. Be wise and make the right decisions, you know. Because this five minutes go contribute to the next five years, what will contribute to the next 500 so every move we make, we ought, to be, we ought to be militant and meticulous about all movements right now. You it's know? now or never, right? It is now or never. Cause yeah, cause that's it's how been I too feel, long. you know? Now or never yeah, because it's been too long. Yeah, because that is where, yeah, we ought to deal with it, so straight up. Hey, I just smile on the eye, what deadly soldier out of the original Antigua. Buzz Rock has make you know. Six million ways to dub. Choose one. Blessed love.